All right, YouTube Pyro fans. Somebody was talking about a blaster's knot on one of the Pyro forums on the internet. And I'm not a professional blaster, and I'm not sure if this is exactly how you properly tie a blaster's knot. But I'm going to show you how I do it. And I think it's you know, perfectly suitable way to scab wire for pyro technicians. I have no idea if this is the proper way you would do this in professional blasting. But anyway, assume that's your igniter and that's your <clears throat> scab wire. You split the legs, strip back the insulation, twist the legs together, I got that in the frame? Yeah, I think so. I'm using some lamp cord or speaker wire here just because it's bigger and it'll maybe a little easier to see it. So that's one leg twisted together. Then I take the other two legs and twist them together. If you left that just like that, it wouldn't have strength if it got pulled in the field it would just tear apart. I've kind of exaggerated how much wire I would have stripped. But anyway, you got your two wires now connected together. Then take that and tie it in a knot, just an overhand knot. So now, if there's any tension on the wire, the tension's going to be on the knot, not on these twisted connections. Now this wire isn't going to work exactly like igniter wire and scab wire, but what you do next is you take these bare ends, you take one end and bring it down this direction and just twist it around that trunk. take the other bare end the other direction because what you're trying to do is keep this bare wire apart from each other so you take that other end and twist it around the trunk so now the two bare ends are apart from each other the knot takes all the load of tension if there's any tension applied on there you don't have to cover these you don't have to cover them with insulation or electrical tape this bare wire, you just leave it and that'll work out in the field perfectly well for your pyro needs.